we have been playing with... Well, it was relatively active supports in the second game, kind of passive supports in the first game. Uh, Faith has been having a pretty hard time. We'll see if he does any better on the Oracle in this situation. What is that noise? Anyway. I think it's just something outside. Uh, we got Void Spirit Band, Shaker Band. Uh, Snapfire, again, makes it through into the pool, but is not going to be uh, the number one priority for these two teams as newbie just get rid of Omni Knight and then head back for Slardar. It's, it's, this first phase to me is just so weird, or it's so uh, incongruous with what we've been seeing in some of the other regions or you know, in the qualifiers for this patch overall because... Slardar making it through into the second phase is weird, and Snapfire being ignored. Uh, Avengirl's going for Rubik here. I'm personally not a huge fan of this support duo. It it can work, but it's just a little bit light on lockdown. At least the Void is going to help with that somewhat, and it's an okay Rubik game so far. As Newbie going for Troll Warlord, who has been... Just so successful, this patch. And Troll Slardar are going to give them some amazingly quick Roshan Dyer potential. Good laning. Uh, and Avengirl's going f even further into this Faceless Void combo as they now pick up the Invoker. Invoker grabbed, but still with quite a bit of counterpick potential left on the table. Um, Void Spirit at least has been removed. I think he actually has a really good matchup. Uh, against Invoker, but remaining. what else could Newbie go for? Five here? seconds Let's remaining. Banned. Let's have a quick look as Centaur gets banned out. Man, if, if they picked Centaur, they would just be all in on uh, Sunstrike combos. What else? So there's like eh, Broodmother, also pretty good. Uh, TA is still in the pool. I could definitely see a TA pick for pick. newbie this game. Their Roshan potential would be absolutely insane. Uh, I think anything that... If they pick another hero that uses the Amplify damage, um, it's not like Avengirls actually have very good ways to deal with getting amped and uh, getting right-clicked. And given the, the lineup, I don't think they're going to be going for a Quaswex Invoker at all. Like It looks like an okay game remaining. for Quaswex, but... Uh, they really just need the extra Sunstrike damage, and remaining. it seems like their draft is completely predicated on this idea of, okay, we're going to head to the, the sort of late game, we're going to get that Cataclysm going, uh, and with good Chronospheres, that's how we're going to win the fights. They need somebody that can go in and scout first, because the Void can, they have no frontliner yet, and the Void can't be the first one into the fights, because if he does, he's just going to get disabled or... Um, you won't be able to get a good chrono off because Nubi are just going to scatter. So, Avengirls really need either a frontliner or a really good vision providing hero. So, you know, they could maybe pick a Beastmaster here, and then the Beastmaster Hawk could give them the vision that they need uh, to get good chronos off. Or they just need some beefy boy like the Omni or the Centaur that's already being banned out to just go walk into the fight. Uh, they can't really pick Underlord or anything because they're already against Troll. So, they just go service. for Wind Ranger? Why Wind Ranger? Doesn't make any sense to me. She's not she's not a frontliner. She works okay with Chrono. I mean she can kind of scout with like the Windrun invis, but they're they're all so squishy. This is Tiny is gonna have a field day. Tiny was the first pick this game for Ten newbie, and Avengirls have just picked a bunch of heroes that are going Choose to get your hero. absolutely run at by Tiny all game. And now we just got Leshra picked up for AQ, so continuing to play these relatively hard farmers. They need to get so many sun strikes, and they need to get Invoker huge. This game, they need a really fast Aghanim Scepter. This game, I don't like Avengirl's draft really. This Wind, this Wind Ranger pick is just kind of weird to me. Like you're also picking Wind Ranger into the Oracle, so it's not like you can look at the starter and the Troll World and be like, ah, well you've got Wind Run against the the like Amp and the right click, so you can kind of kite. But then. You've got Oracle Disarm for Focus Fire, and then you've got the Purge as well. So th then what? Then what's your plan? Um, I'm not sure. Ten seconds remaining. But we shall we shall see. And Troll Warlord just looked so good. Five seconds. Looked amazing remaining. in game one. Um, it is also possible that Void could completely pop off this game and uh, get a lot done, but we will we will have to see.
And I also have some slight doubts about this uh, this support duo. Not not my favorite, but we'll see what happens. Anything is possible. The other thing that's really nice about Nubi, and I've only just kind of realized this now, is that they are not cooldown reliant at all. So there's going to be this whole window all the way through the early game and into the mid game where they've kind of picked up one item each on all of their cores. So like Diffusal and maybe a Yules and potentially Blink on the Slardar, uh, depending on what, what sort of setup he's going. And they can just fight nonstop. And anytime Chrono is on cooldown, they're just kings of the map. They can do absolutely whatever they want. So... I think this is going to be a tough one for Aven Girls. But as I've said over the course of this series, I think Aven Girls have shown uh, the slightly better, uh, the slightly better ganking. But I do think Newbie have shown the better team fight execution. But the roles are kind of reversed a little bit here because I think Aven Girls have the better team fighting lineup, whereas it's uh, it's Newbie with sort of your more skirmish oriented. Uh, pick off kind of a setup. So we'll see how that Prepare plays out in practice battle. as we get ourselves into this game number three. Any Anything interesting happening starting item wise? Let's have a quick look. Rubik starting with a Bassy. That's not crazy though. Um, eh, nah, nothing too interesting. I wonder if we're going to see. Oh, okay, Slardar's actually playing safe lane. I was about to say, I wonder if we're going to see Slardar doing this thing. That I keep seeing uh, Dire offlane Slardar do. Just get bash level 1 and then just get 3 hits on the creeps as they come past to prime your bash. Uh, but probably not the case here. And Avengirls. So not going for the full aggro tri lane that they have been going for in the past. Uh, they are just opting to kind of start with the AA and uh, Void down here at bottom. So a bit more of a standard 2-1-2 setup. Though it's actually newbie. Uh, who are the ones going aggro. Also, interesting to note, Nubia have been dire uh, all three games, so it seems like the priorities kind of line up for both teams. That the Ben girls always prefer uh, the Radiant, and Nubi always prefer dire, so both teams are getting their preferred side. The battle begins. Oh, Mice going to go looking for a toss, perhaps, but uh, X just walks in and grabs this uh, this bounty. Gonna take a lot of damage on the way out, but let's just time walk up onto the high ground and we'll be okay after that. Both teams position four players <laughs> have been very roaming focused uh, so far in this series, but Rubik not as roam heavy of a hero for the first couple of minutes, much more of a laning support. So it'll be interesting to see how that imbalance kind of plays out because I don't think Rubik actually really wants to be up here top. He's going to help the Wind Ranger get her first couple of levels for sure. Uh, but after that point, I think he will probably want to head down bottom as the toss back puts Ancient Apparition way out of position. And uh, one more punch from this time is going to do it, even with the Windlace. Not fast enough to beat the boots, and that is going to be your first blood. From a stone. <laughs> oh, why am I? In, why am I in net worth? It's too early for that. Let's go last hits. Now let's have a quick look at mid. Um, this matchup is actually pretty good for Invoker, but Invoker's going Claws Wex. Okay, a bit weird. I don't know. I don't think there's a build where you go like Claws Wex early and then back for Exhort. At least you only go back for Exhort really late. I'm sort of thinking about like the Abed build where he goes Quas Exhort early and then goes back for Wex. Um, but to me this seems just so weird Dyer's with the, has been the whole idea of their, their lineup. And also I'm pretty sure Quas Exhort has a good matchup against Lesh Track. Like, Lesh cannot compete with you in terms of damage if you go uh, for Exhort. So, I don't know. The mana burn is going to be really annoying for Troll and Slardar. They're both very spell reliant Not heroes, but they enough. both have absolutely atrocious mana pools. So I, I can see the incentives, but I think they're going to lack damage if he goes QE. We'll see what happens. So far, lane seems to be going pretty well, but again, I think this is the Invoker favored matchup. What build is left? I get some lightning early. Yeah. 
Should sort of keep an eye on this Trilane versus Duel Lane. So long as they don't feed too much, this is actually pretty good for Event Girls. Uh, they do have their small camp unblocked, so able to run a couple of pulls here and there, deny some experience, pull the wave back. Um, and they are pretty much, com well, not completely shutting this slaughter out at top, but at least putting some really good pressure on him. And Wizard low on regen, also there's a ward to scout a potential courier rotation, so they could even kill that. Root into another root. Mugi needs to get out of the cold feet. He does manage it. And Ancient Apparition, just not fast enough, is going to be brought down with one more touch. Though, uh, farm across the board looking good for Avengirls. So we'll see if this aggressive tri lane actually pays off. It's not that much of a discrepancy. AATPing in bottom. Is it going to get pushed away? Mid. Tornado's been used, no defensive option for Deska, bad place for him to be, follow-up stun, it's just too much. One more auto attack from AQ's can get it, and first. newbie, strength to strength to strength this game. Really no problems. <laughs> Void getting pressured out of the lane pretty consistently. Does have relatively even farm compared to the troll. Oh, Tiny's running mid again. Oh, is this going to be a toss into the tower? Invoker's fast enough with the Wex, fortunately. He wants that DD. Okay, now he's used the tornado. Now what? Toss up. Stun completely whips. They really just want this rune. Rubik getting involved now. Alright. That's weird, but... In the end, it will be Lesh with the DD and Invoker getting pressured back a little bit. There's a tornado in 10 seconds, but for now, AQ getting a lot of damage out of this DD. And Rubik forced away from top, so Slaughter gets a little bit of breathing room. Nice rotation from YC, and he's just gonna go for the Radiant same thing again. Scanning. Are they spotted? Deska, yeah, I can see him now. Toss back. Sun finds its mark this time around. They don't have the double damage. But I think this might beat up the creep wave arrives, so they're absorbing some of the edict. And turning around, YC might actually be dead to that auto attack. Good turnaround from Deska, still had the fairy fire, in fact, so he was fine. Alright, very nice. That should help. Good tornado, he caught both of them as he was like midair. Yim wanted the he gets one of the bounty runes, but Wizard is gonna come over here and snipe the other. And Faith just can grab both at bottom. Zero deaths so far for your man's Faith. He's he's doing okay. And uh, Ancient Apparition kind of realizing what's going on here with all these tiny rotations. Is going to come in. They're looking for the toss back over onto the Lesh. There, but there's the cold snap. Interrupting the Lesh rack. He can't get the stun out. AQ's just stuck in his animation. He's got a fairy fire if he gets out of this stun. Does just manage to use it to turn around also as Oracle arrives. So one for one, but they will not get the invoker, so still pretty good for Avengirls. And they fight back and are continuing to win the CS battle uh, on their lanes. And that's gonna be pretty pretty fast turn already for the invoker. Hmm. Void's game is a little bit of a concern, but this like the squishier, slightly more aggressive lineup is kind of working out in the lanes, at least. Mm, Tiny's still just trying to apply pressure. Moogie, what's the build gonna be? Well, no signs of anything interesting just yet. Already got some arcane boots for Faith. These outposts just getting traded back and forth. Because why not? I guess you don't want. You don't want enemy heroes TPing it into your backline. Very defensive warding from Event Girls. Just kind of trying to keep this bottom side of the map locked down. A little bit of action up top. Shackle is going to latch onto the part of it, but looking like Yim is very dead here. Wizard doesn't even need to use the crush. Can they get anything else on the Zhao Yu? He only had uh, two stacks of bash as well. Again, looking for the invoker. Did they bring detection this time around? No. So they got a chain. Rubik keeping in, cold snap out. 
Nice tornado. Desky gets back to the creep wave. Now the lift back into tower range. I don't think Tiny is dead, but... Good for Avengers. They only rotate one to keep the invoker alive, and that's a two-man commitment from newbie. And the invoker is still winning this mid lane. All right. Well, I guess it turns out that both invoker builds just win against. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Ward helps him a little bit. He's only gonna do his best. They're looking for the kill on Faith. Looks like they will get him. And uh, AA actually just walks away. They didn't have the damage for it. Dyer are scanning. Dyer's structures. Slardar starting fortified. to catch up top. Not really. Wind Rangers already got javelin, so you could see a little bit of harassment and then just a quick focus fire dive coming out from Jiu soon. Yeah, Wizard realizes exactly what's going on. Like, try to do some pulls. Try to do whatever. Tiny holding on to mid while AQ is just jungling up a little bit. This seems to be his preferred habitat. I saw it on the Medusa in the previous game. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Rubik does at least have some boots, but not having the most amazing start. And Tiny getting some CS off of that mid wave. So gets a little bit going for himself there. It's AA dead. <laughs> the battle for this outpost continues. Void TP. Mm -hmm. Alright, Void TP'd mid. I, I guess just to come and farm. Maybe he wanted to TP and then tor uh, Tornado was on cooldown. That's a little bit of a miscommunication. I think he wanted to TP like Tornado snap or snap Tornado and then just Chrono attack. to get that kill. But... Radiant are scanning. Well, they smoke. They still really Dyer's want to use this chrono. Is under attack. They don't see anything though. They, they they want AQ dead so bad. But they're not gonna find anything. This is an enormous waste of time to face this void. Alright, now they've got the tornado EMP. Is under attack. AQ's actually still okay. And now Moogie spots him. Yeah, cannot afford to trade any hits, especially not with whirling axes on you. Faith is just farming <laughs> all the while. That should help. Ten minute bounties coming up. Uh, what? Both teams? Did both teams get experience? No, only Dyer's only the radiant got experience. They just they actually just got sniped on newbie. So what's that? It's gonna be a big, probably a big ATP swing. Once the graph catches up. And Windranger is going for the Maelstrom. This build, I thought this build had kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. Uh, people just going for the straight MKB rush, but Thank you. I guess um, Xiao Yu deciding that he does still want the Maelstrom. It's it's an okay farming item, but you're mostly farming with power shots. And he dropped down, bash, chain stun, too much, nothing that Invoker can do. Nicely set up by YC and Wizard. Cost them all of their mana. Now the Chronosphere coming out. The XX, they really want this. Power shot along with some focus fire damage. AQ's not dead yet. Requires a little bit of a dive from Zhao Yu. And now Nubi looking for the turnaround. They want this void kill. He's only got one point in time walk, but he's being kept alive. Great shackle from the backside of the fight. Keeps him alive right as the that last Oracle nuke comes through. And they will get the turnaround. That was... I think that was a little bit of a crazy chrono, but... Worked out. Oh, no. I see. Okay. He's, he's, he's being scouted. There is Radiant's this supremely defensive ward from Avengirls. So. But uh, YC should realize that there's some kind of vision. The, the void played a bit weird there. And once again, the outpost gets scouted. Okay, so Wind Ranger really needs to take this lead and kind of run with it. Troll Warlord is just going for... Is that a Yasha? Or... Probably just Diffusal. Invoker gonna be going back to the Vessel. Still pretty much full qua <laughs> completely full Quaswex. And yeah, Lush is gonna be going for Yules. 
So it's not really going to get punished for this chrono timing. You know, still waiting on some items on the newbie side, but that is going to be a concern a little bit later on. At least AA's got six now. Wizard you're diving. Bash. Crush. Nice blast thrown out. Wizard taking a decent amount of damage, and I'm going to go chasing for him. And you get the lift, not quite. And the toss in from the tiny finishes the kill on the Ancient Apparition. Now they're looking for a further dive. AQ diving past the tower. Toss has been stolen, but Yim's a little bit light on mana. And now the toss comes forward. Toss goes back. Wizard comes in, and that's the end of that kill. Reduced to your elements. And at the same time, Tesco farming and pushing out mid. Losing this mid tier one actually really sucks for for newbie this early. They also had their little mango tree back here, but that got dealt with pretty quickly. Moogie! The stun is pretty long, but there's not that many procs. They might be able to find a turnaround. Here comes the battle trance. Ice Blast is coming in over the top as well. Faith, can he keep him alive? Moogie, unfortunately, is getting dragged away from his supports. And so Faith will not be able to make it happen. They will just lose the Troll Warlord in the end. So even with... What I would say is the more teamfight heavy lineup, the last couple of minutes of Engirl's looking good on the pickoffs, making the moves, uh, Invoker's just about to pick up the Spirit Vessel, I think the Vip Boost is on its way right now. Uh, has been killed. At the Chrono Top, okay. and they get a Courier, okay, they're gonna lose the AA, but that's well worth it for EXX who just TP straight mid. And straight back to farming. Top tower is under so Invoker has Spirit Vessel, but no uh, charges. So okay, there's there's a snap and a walk away. Dyer's top tower is under attack. You get him next time. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. really needs to get somebody else in on these kills to, or in on these ganks. To get the kills and get those vessel charges. Radiance rolling. bottom tower has fallen. Dead. Trolls almost got if you Leshrac being a little bit greedy, but this is AQ we're talking about. Is that a big surprise? Uh, it does just go straight for the BOTs first. So playing a little bit more of a farm heavy game and. Dyer's top uh, I tower. Maybe of the opinion attack. that they they win this late. I'm not sure if it's an easy win late like there's still always Dyer's the problem of troll warlord falling. getting kited and you're scaling into void invoker which even without an amazing amount of farm is still pretty good and they're doing quite well early on here Dyer's so shouldn't be a problem is under attack. heading towards the late game what's Slardar going for this has 1k gold on wizard tough start but he did get sacked by his team for sure and we have Blink on the Tiny. Almost, actually. Why well, is he farming pretty well? So, eh, Slaughter not doing great, but Tiny kind of making up for it a little bit. And with the Diffusal and the Tiny Blink, they might be able to make some stuff happen. AA in just an insane position. But scouts out the Tiny, who's not going to get caught by the Cold Feet. What are the Evangel supports doing? What are, why are you guys back here? What on earth? I guess Wind Ranger was kind of in the area. This Lushrak is pretty fast and has the high ground advantage here. EMP gets thrown down to cover the retreat, but that was just a straight up feed from the two uh, Evangel supports. Uh, so what, they, they got some vision in the enemy base and that's been down for only 30 seconds. So I don't think they saw the Tiny before. He just really wanted the ward and then they saw the Tiny and was like, oh, well. Let's try for this kill. Let's see. Nice block. But still gonna be enough damage. Fate's Edict. Not able to keep him alive. And is that finally, finally they get some vessel charges. Faith running back in, wanted to put down the ward, but gets immediately spotted. Two supports with the lockdown, does have the ultimate, but not really worth using to save himself. And Windrange not even willing to use the uh, invisor in there. Bottom, they do have the Chronosphere available. Can they catch two? HQ. Fairly healthy, but not that tanky. Now, here comes the jump forward. Chrono not popped just yet. Chrono gets popped. Moogie is going to be looking for the escape. Actually going to continue fighting as the buyback now comes in from Faith. Moogie pops the ult. Looking for one more. Nice tornado going to open up a little bit more space, but AA still in some danger. Wizard running in. The river is his habitat. The river is his home. He's going to be okay. So, uh, weird buyback from Faith. 
They lose the Lesh. And Newbie trying to be quite aggressive with no battle chance. At least they've got False Promise. Desk is just going to go looking for the backlines though, and they can't protect the backlines. YC will go in looking for the big Avatar combination that keeps Faith alive. And now it's Yim who's actually in some danger. He steals the Avalanche and turns it back around. Wizard just emerges from the river. He's had a little bath, and now he's coming in to get some kills. Ancient Apparition put on ice. Rubik also brought down. And Newbie, two quick kills. Now looking to transition that maybe even a little bit further in. They start taking some control of the Radiant Jungle. They do also have a Vlad's coming out for the Slardown. So they're going to mostly be relying on uh, the Tiny for the initiation. They don't quite have the locked in on the Void, but he doesn't escape to the tree line. And YC is there to put him in his grave. Back to back to back. Three quick kills for Newbie across the board. Voker again on the prowl looking for something. I think he actually just didn't spot Faith. They've got this crazy deep ward, but this ward is really like doing nothing for them. They spot the occasional courier, and they can kind of tell that somebody is in in one of these lanes, but what else can they do? Still a pretty close game on the numbers. Regeneration. The girl's mostly waiting for PKBs, it looks like. And there's a Schmidt, doesn't seem like any real way to keep him alive here. Faith trying to PP, but it's just too little too late. Infinity. What is Moogie going for? So he's also going BKB. Everybody is just building BKBs. AQ still being very greedy. Picks up the Yules and now is going back for the, middle tower uh, the full Bloodstone. It's going to be a bit hard to use the blood... The, I don't think the Bloodstone and the Essence Ring are going to give him as much survivability as he would like against the Ancient Apparition, but we'll see what happens. Very close on the attempted toss back, but Xiao Yu is going to be okay. What talents has he gone for? So he did go for the 5 armor. Pretty standard. I think if he gets Bloodstone and then he gets BKB, this Lesh is just a monster, but... Uh, before that point does need to be pretty careful. Dyer's top tower Though his build attack. is definitely going to outscale the Invoker's build. Like, Voker's just gone for Vessel into Yules. Um, meanwhile, we got Boots of Travel, which is just by default kind of Dyer's a good farming item. Right? Can they find the BKB just yet on the Wind Ranger? Stun does catch. Tornado trying to make the space, but AQ definitely dodges it. And Wizard is looking for more. They find the two supports up on the high ground. Fire can tank a lot of damage, but Newbie ready to commit, and they've got the save. Chronosphere does come out. They're looking for this flash track kill. Couldn't get the Yules off in time. Tiny trying to make the space. Another big Avatar combination. Cole Willard finally pops the battle trance. But he gets Yules. Now we can see why that was the decision for the Invoker. They're kiting Moogie out. He does find the one kill. They disarm the Void, but they will lose their Troll Warlord. And Faith is the bonus kill. As Vain Girls only lose two. And Newbie. Faced. Four heroes Dyer's falling. Uh, did they... I don't think there's any buybacks right now. So I don't manage to... Slither away. Very nice chrono. As soon as the false promise gets used, it just immediately goes on the left track. Lesh does zero damage that fight, pretty much. And EXX walks away with quite a lot of farm and already has the BKB now. With the BKB almost up for the Wind Ranger. Getting close. So, it will be more difficult for Newbie to find these kills once those BKBs are online. Because the Wind Ranger can just kind of pop BKB and, and just run at Lesh. Really, not a whole lot that he can do. I think the way that this game is supposed to be going is that newbie are supposed to be finding more pickoffs in between uh, opponents. But it's really Avengirl is continuing to be the one applying all the pressure, finding all the kills. AQ dies once again in the bottom lane. Radiance top tower is under attack. This guy's place is really aggressive. Farms super aggro. And it seems like this quasi is sort of the perfect way to punish his wizard. Not a whole lot that he can do to really help out Faith here. Faith is dead. Wizard's running forward. TK is coming in for the troll. Can he get some kind of combination going onto the invoker? Deafening Blast comes out, but it won't be enough to save him. Bit too deep of a dive, and they will get the punish. Oh, 
a little bit more. Mugi gets the slow. I don't even know if he's going to bother popping the battle trance. Okay. Well, good pick off into a bit of a dive too far. Before he's going to be going back for his Mjolnir. Finally, the BKB up for the Wind Ranger. Didn't, had an amazing start. Super fast Maelstrom. Has not found as many pickoffs as I would maybe have expected. And, uh, but still pretty, pretty good BKB timing. Net worth and experience. Both starting to get pushed up along with the win expectation. After that really nice chrono from XXX. Ah, XXX. EXX. Too many. S triple C. XXS. Axe. Alright, Sardar gets tossed forward, but the BKB immediately comes out from the void. There is a Chronos for available. Jumping forward, Wizard in some danger. Chrono, Faith walks down off of the high ground, and Faceless Void says, Thank you very much. Free kill for me. Next, they spot AQ. It looks like he will be able to bring down the Rubik. They keep the void locked down. YC re engaging nicely. BKB is available for the Wind Ranger. I'm just gonna go for the BKB TP out. It is just enough survivability. Does this? I don't. Does the does the root pierce magic immunity? I don't, I don't think it does, right? Uh, does it even have? Yeah, it doesn't have the like the information on whether it pierces spell immunity. Okay, Moogie heading into the pit. They kick off on the void, but they don't have Slardar. I'm gonna make this a little bit slower as a result. He will be able to TP to the TP. Actually, wait, he can't TP up, but this is a radiant. They're going for it. He is scouting. He's got the Ice Blast. Boogie taking some damage. There's a power shot. This is this is dangerous. Another power shot and the Ice Blast. Boogie might just lose the Aegis immediately after he picks it up. There's the Ice Blast, Sun Strike, Boogie just gets out of range. And Faith throwing out the Faith Edict. Well, the starter is still pretty tanky. Faith will pop the ultimate to save him and should just be a full reset for newbie. Invoker wants something here. AQ looking for the TP out. Invoker thinks about canceling it. Does do so with the cold snap, but now he's being caught out somewhat. Let's get Yules up into the air. Still has his own Yules to save. Nice ice wall. Will he be able to stay alive? Mugi's looking for him. DKB pop also at the battle trance. Just wants to shoot through the Invoker, but he survives! He actually manages to walk away. They didn't have enough damage to finish him off, and now Troll Warlord they start being kited. They don't have the Oracle saves anymore. Nice lockdown on Slardar. Faith Edict just barely coming off cooldown. Movies, all things considered, not bad that they only lose the Slardar at the end of the day, but that did cost them the 10 second BKB on the Troll Warlord. Faceless Void has just been farming this entire time. Making the right decision, not really interested in participating. Oogie loses the Aegis. They gotta punish this. Alright, Wind Ranger dead. Rubik is also dead. Toss. Not happening. Oh, that was really toss. Not bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Void finds a telescope. Uh, needs to wait for his team to respawn before he can make any kind of a play here. But... AQ is keeping his team on their toes. The... AA Void combo does still have a pretty good kill threat at this point. How's that Bloodstone? Almost there. Okay, so AQ is looking a, a bit tankier, and yeah, definitely needs the BKB afterwards. But net worth not that far ahead of the Invoker, I have to say. Uh, Book has really been finding, Desk has been finding some really good pickoffs. And starting to get the points up in the Exord. As, alright, AA was just on a warding mission and died. Alright, once he gets, uh, once he gets Ag, so once he gets that, those points up in the Exord, Cataclysm is going to be a hell of a lot more useful. AA buys back. To throw an Ice Blast top. Alright, they get the dust on the Invoker at bottom. Can he juke this out? Oh, they've spotted him with the Edict. AQ, there's the slow, no BKB or anything for Voker and Okay, so they, they shouldn't fight without Voker. They're gonna think about it. 
Wait, gotta be careful. There's the Shackle under the Troll Warlord, but there should be a save from Faith. Nice long range false promise. Keeping him alive, Troll Warlord does have a lot of abilities to pop, but he's just getting bad. Yeah, this is not gonna let him go. Now he's just gonna turn around, try and pop the battle trance. It's just in time. Can they keep this lockdown going onto the Wind Ranger? Toss across. Void getting destroyed by Tiny. What a play from YC. Puts Void right in Moogie's path as he's battle trancing. And that is going to be such a clean team fight for Moogie. It's even some Bloodstone charges for the Lesh. Could not have asked for a better result for them. But what a toss. That was amazing. Middle tower like Void jumped away because after the the super clutch battle trance happened. Oh, and wow! Now they find uh, they just find an orb of destruction. Tower is under that up. Radiant structures are fortified. Where'd it go? Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower. Right, being completely drained of all of his mana. This is Invoker just by himself. He doesn't have any backup. No one's even alive and does need to be a little bit careful with this sentry ward up on the hill. Okay, with that, we swing straight back from a 5k lead in a Vengirl's favor now to a 7.5k lead in that uh, in the direction of Newbie. Faceless Void just not getting the chrono off in any useful capacity that fight. He was supposed to be the the big heavy hitter for his team. Making the decision to commit for that fight after the Invoker had Radiant's already... His Invoker already died, right? Yeah, Invoker died first. And then Radiant's they like commit to the fight and just ev everything goes bad. They didn't even get a single kill. Radiant's top tower is under attack. so much farm. He's got his 150 cast range talent, he's got his Aether Lens, that false promise came from a mile away. Moogie can really play however he wants. Picked up a full S and Y now, he's going back to the Basher. Let's see him go looking for a blink. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. No chrono, no fight wins. Really. And I think the problem that you're starting to see is that Newbie have two initiators and Avengers really have none. Chrono lands on a two. They found the backline, but they didn't get the troll wool, and he's gonna get lifted. They will lose the Oracle, but is that gonna be enough? Oracle immediately buying back, and Void, he's popped everything that he has. EXX now in a bit of danger. YC setting things up on the Yim. They've lost the two supports, and AQ waiting with the stun. EXX will not be able to escape. Can't get the time walk off. Wind Ranger going toe to toe with the Leshrac, but I think there's just too much damage coming in the opposite direction, and YC finds one more. Invoker was trying to save a buddy, couldn't do it. This tiny is popping off, and newbie Radiance looking like they might even be able to claim a lane of Rax. So there's no buyback Radiance on the void, no buyback on the invoker. They're both dead for one minute, and there are creeps pouring into this base. Rubik wants to throw out a fade ball, but he knows if he does, he's just going to straight up die. And this is looking like it might even be two lanes at this point. Central rush on respawn in two minutes. It was a good chrono, but then Radiant's where was the follow-up? What is what is this Wind Ranger actually doing? Is Wind Ranger able to lock on to one target and, and kill them? It has not been the case. And uh, here comes Lane of Rackman. Also, seemingly, Pro Warlord, good hero. This patch. Seems like he is suiting the style and suiting some of the other picks. It could be a little bit to do with uh, some of the other heroes that are... Are, are popular, he just has good matchups, and of course, I should see this game. Certainly good with Slardar. Toss in, BKB is available for Zhao Yu. Trying to commit for this kill, but is there going to be enough damage? Wizard's still pretty tanky. Face of Void has already popped the BKB. Cataclysm comes in, it kills off Mugi. Choosing to save Wizard instead, and Mugi was just trapped. Newbie a little bit of sleep at the wheel here. They took the two lanes of Rax and perhaps thought that the game was just over, but. Not the case, and that is going to be three quick kills for Avengers. If they're really lucky, Roshan will uh, instantly respawn, and they can just take that and swing the game back. But uh, even with some nice pickoffs, they're still pretty, pretty far in the hole. And sometimes it happens that slightly experimental picks, like going for the Wind Ranger off lane, can come back to bite you. with a blink. 
get into the back lines. Maybe dodge a chrono if you're doing a really good job. Take this quick new charm, friends. Cast another Cataclysm. They've got the Max Exhort and they've got the Aghanim Scepter. We haven't seen the full combination with a good chrono and the Cataclysm coming out, but still certainly possible for a to make a comeback in this game. Roshan respawning in a minute and a half, so both teams will be able to make a good run at that. Um, so we have all of the neutral items for both sides. We do. Tiny is the one carrying the Orb of Destruction. They've chosen to put the Paladin Sword on the Troll, which is actually crazy given that they've got the Battle Trance and they've got the Oracle Ultimate. Wizard playing very aggressively. Chronosphere is available, but they know they need it. They need a bigger Chrono than just the Slardar to win this upcoming fight. We've got the Puddle, YC, big damage onto the Void. He jumps it off, turns around, commits with the Chronosphere. Here comes the Cataclysm, but it's just on the two utility heroes. And they've got buybacks and a save from Faith. Now Moogie's in the back lines, tearing it up. Still has the Battle Trance. They need to get the Invoker out of here and the Void, but they can't do it. Two of them dead. Invoker still thinking about making some kind of a play here, but Deska, there's really just nothing left for you. No bash, but they get the Yules on the Voker. He could he had so many chances to TP there, but just felt confident in his ability to ghost walk and run for it. Gets found out, and he might just be able to come end this game right now. Yeah, AQ is threatening it. He's gonna force the buyback. The rest of the team are coming. They've got creeps inside of the base. Need to escort this middle wave a little bit too. And the smoke straight in. Do they see anything? They've even got a ward. They see the invoker. The smoke is coming. Deska, what are you doing farming? Not enough respect. Maybe thought that newbie were just going to go Roche or something like that, but... Well. Invoker dead for 100. And newbie in the base now here looking to close it out. Tiny still making the plays. Too much locked in on the Winter Angel. Does not have the BKB. Moogie's already focusing onto the Ancient. Faceless Void figuring out what he can do, but there's just too much control, and it will be Newbie. After a bit of a heartbreaker in game number one, they won that amazing team fight, and then back to back kickoffs on, uh, on AQ saw them losing the game. They come back game number two, they bust out the Medusa, they somehow win that one, and now game three. Uh, will end up taking a pretty convincing win over Avengirls. Avengirls did well. Uh, they did well in the laning stage. They had some really nice team fights, had some good pickoffs, but just some weird decision making about when to commit to a fight. And there was there was so much weight on the Faceless Void's shoulders this game because of the draft, because of the fact that they didn't have anyone else that could really go in first and give him. A ton of vision to work with i think he still played well given the circumstances but i really don't like this uh this wind ranger last pick i think it just didn't really work out the way that uh event girls were maybe hoping that it would so that wraps it up for our first series guys we're not done yet though there is still more china dota action coming your way uh i don't know if they're going to play this next series immediately or if there is going to be a little bit of a break i believe the scheduled start was in like 10 minutes so even if they're playing it immediately or if they're playing it after a little bit of a break uh shouldn't be shouldn't be too different so thank you for watching guys hope you're enjoying the coverage and i'll see you back here for uh the first game of our next series which is going to be uh here i'll just show you the the schedule which is going to be keen versus aster uh coming up soon so catch you guys then and the lobby's already okay the lobby's already hosted so we'll be getting into that series very, very shortly. Catch you soon.